And after that deadly Metro North accident, 22 News reporter Caitlin Gosley found out what safety measures are in place here at railroad crossings in western Massachusetts. Tuesday's crash between a Metro North commuter train and an SUV was the deadliest accident in the rail service's history and is a frightening reminder of just how risky this often daily act of driving over train tracks can be. I would say it is scary, you know, getting hit by a train, that's scary. So I, I avoid it as much as possible, just go by the rules. You see those lights flashing? Stop. Every three hours, a pedestrian or vehicle is hit by a moving train. While most of these accidents can be avoided with a little common sense, there are ways that you can educate yourself so you can better understand and respect the awesome power of trains. For the past 200 years, railways have been the top shippers of freight on land. Even today, they're more energy efficient and economical than trucks. This is due to the low friction of steel wheels on steel rails. This low friction also has a downside. It can take anywhere from half a mile to a mile and a half for a fast moving train to stop, depending on the weight, which can be in the thousands of tons. It's difficult to judge the speed of a train as it's traveling head on. Take this Norfolk and Southern freight train for example. How fast do you think it's going? 20, 40, or 60 miles per hour? Many people will guess 40. It's really 60. That 20 mile an hour difference can spell a disaster for someone trying to race a train to a crossing. Even if you barely clear the tracks, the train still overhangs three feet on either side of the line. Now an increased number of high-speed trains are moving through western Massachusetts as Amtrak's Vermonter rail line added stops in both Northampton and Greenfield, with another stop soon to be added in Holyoke. I think people should be a little bit more tentative with a high-speed train, but uh, regular rules apply. You know, pay attention, look both ways, stop before the tracks when necessary. Railway crossings are where most of the public will interact with the railroad and is thus where most safety precautions are implemented, including gates, bells, flashing lights, and signs. This isn't always the case, however. Many rural crossings only have signposts and perhaps bells or lights to warn of an approaching train, which will likely be traveling much faster than a crossing that's in town. Going the posted speed limit, trains will activate the active warning devices, such as gates and lights, approximately 20 seconds before they reach the crossing. However, this shouldn't be relied upon, as trains do not always go the exact speed limit. Leading up to the start of that high-speed service, 22 News was there as Amtrak police campaigned for safety, urging drivers to remember to stop their cars at least 15 away from tracks when checking for oncoming trains. Amtrak police also say that when you're in a line of cars, you should never pull out partially onto train tracks. You should only drive over them when you know you can clear those tracks completely. Operation Lifesaver, Amtrak's nonprofit rail safety group told 22 News, drivers need to always be listening closely for oncoming trains, even if those signal lights are not flashing. And be aware that snow can muffle the sound of an oncoming train. You should not rely on train schedules to predict a train's approach. While trains are usually on time, there are such things as unscheduled trains or specials. If there is a sign at or before the crossing saying that there are more than two sets of railway lines, or you see more than one set of tracks, then you should be looking for as many trains as there are tracks. Technology isn't perfect, and things break. If you see a crossing malfunction, there is a blue sign posted underneath the cross bucks and black letters on the gatehouse with a phone number and a crossing serial number. Call that phone number and the local police department phone number to report the malfunction. Tell them the serial number, the name of the street it's on, and exactly what's wrong with it. Trains are awesome, there's no denying that. They can also be darn inconvenient at times, getting in your way when you need to be somewhere. Be patient, don't race it. But there's one thing to take away here, is that it's a really bad idea to race a train. They're a lot faster than you think. If you're
tie, you lose. For more information, visit Operation Lifesaver's website at www.oli.org. Operation Lifesaver is a nonprofit organization dedicated to railway safety. Thank you for watching.